Happy Sunday, folks. Just a quick video um, showing you guys the Tiger Lily um, or Tiger Lotus Lily. Anyway, I think I should just start calling it uh, what TLL. But the uh, it's it's going to the top. I've got my water flow uh, wide open, and I'm going to trim it down a little bit just. For you guys with the FX5, if you do a water change and you get it below the siphon, or the, I should say the intake, the outtake, where you lose uh, the vacuum on your on your tubes, you get a little air bubble in there and it it makes noise. And so what I do is I just run it wide open, and then um, and it's funny because I'm seeing debris in my filter or in my water, but I run it wide open until I hear the bubbles go away, and then I start cutting back on it, but um, everybody's doing well. Uh, I wanted to show something really odd. This plant, these two plants are this, and I'm not really sure what it is, I'm not even going to say, but it's the one, it's between the Oriental Sword and the Tiger Lotus Lily, if you see it, but it's got a runner on it. And what's really funny, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's kind of it's kind of mixed with the dwarf baby tears. And you can see how the dwarf baby tears is just still running out there, which is really an amazing, a good sign. There's a matter of fact, I'll show you one of these shrimp. These guys are so big, they're a little shy. But just to give you an idea how how big they are. They uh they're smart enough to keep away from keep away from the angels um but there's there's actually some in here i want to show you this big one if you can see this guy right here i don't anyway i'm not doing a good job of showing you that one but but there's uh, quite a few in there but they um but this dwarf baby tear um is doing really well and uh once again you can see the uh it's almost like this is a jungle set or a play set for my um, for my two uh, twig catfish. If you can see that one on the, I think that's a piece of like a cypress or a pine. And then the other one's on the plank. And I found all these actually on a riverbank, uh, just looking around, and they were just all really unique pieces. And the trick is to find something with character that is small. And so the thing that got me about the cypress one in the back is it had that little uh, elbow thing that almost kind of looks like a snake, how it coils out. And then, anyway, and then this thing had a knot on it, which is almost like a piece of oak, I think. But uh, pretty happy with it. And I've got, those are blood worms. And hopefully somebody's going to eat those up at some point. My guess is nobody's found them yet. And speaking of, uh, people are going to start showing up. But uh, those will be gone in a little bit. But what I wanted to talk about is what I understand. I got in a discussion yesterday with uh, Christian. He goes by the name of uh, Beer Belly DK. He's in Denmark. Uh, but it was it was about this tank and. I told everybody how I stopped on the ferds, and I'm like, oh, and you see, I've got a few blood worms added in there. It's hard to feed two small fish, because you just never know what they're going to eat. But I, I don't want, uh, she's looking for them now, but I don't want them to go hungry and eat the eggs. The eggs look really good. Um, they're still there, which is a good sign. And uh, I'm hoping, we'll just see. I'll keep you guys posted. I'm still not happy about his health. And I wonder if he has ick. And the reason I say that is ick, ick, ick affects the gills as well. Even if you can't really see any spots, if you see them breathing heavy, uh, they can get it on their gills and it makes it hard to breathe. And that's actually, uh, that's when ick, ick can become a killer because they, you, you'll just see them at the top. They'll have a little bit of ick on them. And you'll see them at the top. Um, 
He's got... Yeah, I'm not... I don't know. I might have to check him out later. I'm not happy about him. But anyway, the um, here's what I want to talk about really quick. I've hit my five-minute mark. I need to get to the point. This is what I understand. And what I understand is, for all of you that do CO2, usually... Here's the problem. When you have high light, algaes uh, get a boost in nutrients. And so when you have high light and phosphates, or nitrates, uh, you kind of hate the AIDS. Uh, I guess that's a good way to say it. Um, But what happens is you get algae blooms. And algae blooms, uh, the ugly ones are the brown. Uh, The good ones are kind of a green. Uh, but but here's this is it in a nutshell. If you have high light, which I do, this is a two very high uh, T5 HOs with a very glossy reflector, and one of anyway I'm not going to go over what the bulbs are, but it's high light. When you have high light and you do not do CO2, here's what happens. You're putting a ton of nutrients in the water and I have ferts as well that I was putting in there that I've kind of backed off on when you do CO2 CO2 makes the plants hungry and what CO2 will do is it makes the plants grow aggressively and while they're growing they're sucking all the nutrients out of the water they're not, they're not growing slow. They're not kind of in a dormant state. They're just not doing photosynthesis. They're doing photosynthesis and more. And they are aggressively growing. So like if you look at Amano's tanks, Amano always does CO2 and he does high lights. He controls, he doesn't have food floating around, which, you know, I'm trying to figure this out for two small fish. So that's totally my fault. But I will say this. This tank is balanced. And I had a problem with beard algae, and I had a problem with phosphates. I shouldn't say, I don't know phosphates. Well, something like nitrate, phosphate. But but the bigger problem with this tank is this bottom layer, there is a 40-pound bag of organic dirt. Organic dirt, one of the key properties, ingredients of organic dirt, is cow manure. If you wonder why it stinks when you dirt a tank, it's cow manure. And if you wonder why you get... Uh, bubbles in your tank it's because when manure hits water it creates a gas and that gas I'm almost 99% certain is methane it's a form of methane and it will burn it's swamp gas is another uh, term you hear it and by the way and I'm not making this up uh, shit is an acronym it stands for Store high in transit. A long time ago, and and I'm talking maybe 300 years ago, uh, fertilizer, cow manure, was something that people would use to enrich their crops. And there was people that would dry it out in cow patties, package it, put it in a big cargo boat, and sell it. I know that sounds crazy. But here's what used to happen. They'd have it in the bottom of a boat, Back then, the way that you had a flashlight was a torch, right? Not really a torch, but it was a lantern. A lantern is an open flame. They would have it in the bottom of the ship. Salt water would get on it. The guy would go down there with the lantern. The lantern would hit the methane, and it would blow the ship up. And I'm not kidding. And thats I don't know if that's where you know shit hits the fan. I have no idea where that phrase comes from. But uh, store high in transit is the acronym for shit. And I'm not kidding you. Anyway, I know that sounds crazy. Sorry if you guys are offended by the... I'm not normally a potty mouth. And, uh, you know, that's just... That's the word. That's what it means. But I'm getting to say all that to say this. This tank had a lot of the way I dirted it and what was going on, it, you know, it's very rich. And so what Dustin does, and you notice Dustin, he'll add the dirt and he puts it in wet. I put my dirt in dry, put the fluorite uh, gravel in after cleaning it wet. 
Then I capped it with the sand, and then I let it set for two weeks while it worked out why the water soaked down below these layers. And I would get bubbles a lot in the tank because what would happen is these roots are digging down into this nutrient-rich soil, and as they would dig down, and that's also how some of these fluorite rocks would get bubbled up because the bubbles would push those rocks up above the sand. But anyway, I'm uh, not trying to run this really long, but... But the point I'm getting at is I had uh, beard algae in here, okay? And the way that I fixed that, because it was nutrient-rich, what's good for your plants is also good for algae. And if you're boosting with high lights, which is T5HO, you got serious problems. And so I was having problems getting this to grow. I had two T8s in the top and two T5s. When I went all T5s and this thing started doing great, all the other plants here started getting beard algae issues, and it was killing everything. And, I, and literally what I did is I surgically removed it. I cut it out. I cut all the leaves on the lace plant except for one. If you go back and look at beard algae, you can see it in some of the older videos. And I'm not sure of the time frame. Sorry about that. But here's what I added. I found, I found this, and it's Clear Max. And I added three bags of this. A bag of this is for 30 gallons. But I added three bags of this. You can see what it traps, right? and it doesn't hurt plants, it pulls out the thing, things that feed the algaes. So, I said all that to say this. Most people do not run T5HO lights without dosing CO2 because you need something to eat those excess nutrients or you're putting enough light into the tank where the algaes can grow. Uh, and if you watch LA Fish Guy, and I, I watch him every now and then, even though I'm not a salt guy. Amazing, amazing guy. He's fun to watch. Even though it's salt, you guys should watch him every now and then. L.A. Fish guy, tremendous amount of videos out there. But he does salt water. Very, very good how he explains everything, shows you what he's doing. Great videos. Shout out to him, although he'll never watch me. But anyway, but I watched L.A. Fish guy one day, and he had uh, an algae filter. And what it was, was it was just this box that hang, hanged off of, it was on the back of his sump, and it was two T5HOs, and all they did was they, they were bright lights on a acrylic box with a screen mesh that ran salt water through it. And what that light did, and he ran that light during a certain time period, but basically what it did is this, it got all the algaes to grow on that media in the filter substrate and then you would just take it out almost like a honeycomb like a beehive it would pull it out and just uh, take a credit card piece of plastic and just scrape it scrape the algaes off and it completely in two weeks removed all the algae blooms from the saltwater tank and if you've ever seen a saltwater tank with the brown algae or all the stuff in the coral I mean it's a killer totally took it out and I said all that to say this Adding ferts will not, I'm almost 99% certain, even though Christian's a great guy, I think the world of him, and I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, a lot actually. But, but as I understand it, the phosphates and the nitrates and all this stuff, it's in the water. It's there. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the right things to pull those nutrients and the wrong things to not. If you get algae blooms, you can see a little bit of it on that anubius, but... Here, this is, this is bad. So this green algae, now that's an algae bloom. What's going to happen is that algae is going to kill that plant if you don't get it off of there. And like what I try to do is just scrape some of that off by hand. But those leaves, they're pretty much gone. And this Anubius will bounce back. But, I mean, you can see it back in there. I mean, that just looks hideous. Anyway, that's, that's kind of what's going on. But, but what I did is I backed off the ferts. If you put too much of the flourish carbon, the liquid carbon, you'll get a huge algae boom. You'll get a big green algae boom. And it's kind of hard to figure out how to do for the 33 or the 125 gallon. And I need a uh, one of those milliliter syringe uh, devices just to pull it out. I already just get one from my local drugstore for, for nothing. They're dirt cheap. But anyway, I'm hitting my 15 minute mark. It's going to take a while. That is Glosso. Uh, Christian, I think I was telling him this is Glosso. This is some kind of, I don't know what that is. I'm not really sure. Uh, I have it here as well. But then, um, 
this is dwarf baby tier. Anyway, hey, I'm hitting the 15-minute mark. You guys take care. I hope everybody has a great Sunday. And I appreciate all the feedback and all the comments. And we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. See you.